Alright, welcome back everyone to King Pro League. We're just done casting a match uh, between Amaz and Kaldi, who probably got knocked out of the top three for good. I don't think there's any way for him to climb back up unless perhaps Hyped and Trump both lose where Kaldi might be able to get perhaps a third place back again, but he definitely lost his uh, certified spot. Now, it's not guaranteed it'll be in there. Now, next up is going to be um, Hyped, Hyped versus, versus Light coach. coach, which is the most, I guess the highest rank like a battle of the two top players other group at this point um it's the same thing as if strive code fought against firebat so both players are going to be fighting for a safe spot in the top but i think life coach's spot is secured no matter what at this point yeah. with like a perfect oh, tiebreaker yeah. score it's just insane yeah exactly um he, not only does he have the best record out of anyone in the tournament he also has just an insane tiebreaker score i believe it's plus 10 yeah. So he's actually won 10 more games than he's lost, than he's lost, which is just amazing. Yeah, he, Life Coach is on a, a like a complete insane streak since the advent of I would say is it the advent of GVG? I'd say I'd say so. Since GVG, Life Coach has been doing amazing, and that hasn't changed with BRM so far. Although we'll have to see after the full release of Blackrock Mountain where that gets him, because there there will be more tournaments and a lot of experimentation will come in. Yeah, I feel like the actually the biggest change for Life Coach after GVG is not the cards, but rather just within his life, he's become more serious about the game. It is what he's focusing on these days with the team. Yeah. Um, having to join Nylum, which is a very impressive, uh, very hardworking team. And also, he's just been going to so many tournaments. He's been streaming some. He's been uh, just competing at everything. And like he says, like if he goes, to, um, if he wants to succeed in something, he's going to put 100% into it. That's basically what yeah. he says every time on stream. Well, I know that he used to be, you know, a poker pro, and that's something a lot of people are aware of. But Hearthstone, he says, was a bit of a change and a refreshing one because he can actually participate with the community and be less, you know, individualistic about the process. Because poker requires that you try at least not to share your secrets too much because that gives your opponents a possible edge. Whereas in Hearthstone, you can share with the community as much as you want. So that's definitely a place he's comfortable in. And... I mean, his performance is astonishing at this point. Yeah. Well, speaking of sharing secrets, I mean, the metagame changes every week and cards come out every week or, or every month or so mm -hmm. these days. So yeah. even if you share secrets, they're going to become like outdated eventually. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in poker, it's pretty much kind of like a static game. Yeah. 24 hours outdated like information in the Hearthstone. It's like the metagame changed. <laughs> you, you get the information, you go in, you try it out. There's already a counter deck there to, to participate and co to compete against um, the huge wave of people who get maybe perhaps a good net deck uh, and they end up getting countered by people who are prepared for that. All right, so I just gotten word from someone that, uh, from Kaldi's manager, actually, oh. that if Trump loses to RDU today mm -hmm. and Hyped also loses, loses to life, life Coach, coach. Yeah. then then Kaldi uh, will advance to the playoffs. Yeah, to, to, I think he's going to be exactly third at that point. Yeah, he, uh, he currently is third right now. Okay. Yeah, he still is third. All right, so we'll have to see uh, how that goes. So we have the lineups for both players. Hyped is playing Hunter, Mage, Rogue, and Life Coach is playing Druid, Hunter, and Warrior. Would you believe that there is no Warlock in Life Coach's lineup? I, I can what? believe it. I mean... Okay, I can't. <laughs> Yeah. I've seen him play Warlock every week since the KPL started, I think. Yeah. But what I am most excited about here is Life Coach's Mech Warrior, which he's almost certain to bring. If he actually brings that, that's going to be... Yeah. I mean, between Grim Patron and Control Warrior, we already have a pretty... It's as diverse for Warrior as it's ever been. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, there's two decks. Oh, wow, what's happening? And if this is a Mech Warrior for sure, then that's going to make... Uh... The whole match is a lot more entertaining, but Hype bringing his trademark rogue deck. Yeah, um, yeah, he's bringing. Uh, the funny thing is, Hype is known for bringing druid, mage, and rogue to every single tournament. Mm -hmm. But recently, I would say within the last two weeks, he's been adding in Hunter to that mix, so he's getting slightly more predict uh, unpredictable, right? Okay, so there's Very a Hunter slightly. now. All right. Yeah. So okay. now, instead of using only three classes, he's bringing four classes to tournaments. What's the next step going to be? Five? Madness. Well, that is logical. I mean, three. No, he might bring two different classes to the same tournament, Monk. Oh, that's true. Like, yeah. there's a tournament where you can bring Rogue twice. I think, <laughs> to be honest, I think if you could bring, like, a class yeah. three times, Hyped would bring Rogue three times. Three archetypes, De definitely. Maybe I mage. believe it. I believe it. I, I maybe completely mage agree. Really? Yeah, m maybe yeah. he would bring a mage as well. Right. Two, two rogues and a mage. So freeze mage and then mill rogue plus um, 
you know, oil rogue. Have or aggro him, rogue. I see he plays. Have you seen him play mill rogue and KDL, Not at actually? all. No. Now that I mention it, now that I think of it, I've seen him play aggro rogue and about three variants on the oil rogue. One of which was tempo based. I think just Saiyan was working on on ladder, so that was um, a collaborative effort. Uh, effort that's been. I, I guess it sticks around though. The minion base rogue has been very very strong. Hmm. I wonder though which of these lineups is uh, better tailored against the other one because would hyped targets something specific from life coach Okay, I have to say one thing about those two players. They are by far the most predictable players in KPL They have been bringing a very um, Consistent roster every single time, but that doesn't that hasn't stopped them Even if they were targeted by other players in a conquest format from reaching first to second place in their group That that's yeah. something yeah, I think that's sort of striker, right? He always have he always have a set of about say five decks he always brings. Yep. Yeah, he, and with Strife Crow, you can always just like go to his stream, see what he's playing on stream, and be like, <laughs> okay, this is his deck list that he'll bring to KPL. Yeah, and it doesn't help like you, you get a little bit of information, but it doesn't guarantee that you'll win. And I think their position in the tournament just goes to show how how strong as players they are. Because despite the fact that they've been really predictable, they've done really really well. So from those lineups, like Hunter Mage Rogue from Hyped and Druid Hunter Warrior, do you think Hyped um, Hyped's lineup is maybe like has a weak spot to Life Coach's Warrior possibly? Well, to be honest, because Life Coach is probably going to be bringing his Mech Warrior, I have right. no clue about the matchups. Like, I have no clue what what's good against Mech Warrior and what's bad against Mech Warrior, well. and just like the nuances of that matchup. Because you do have cards like the uh, the one three Mech, which is, is that the Warbot? Warbot, yes, that's it. Yeah. That's the one. So yep. I'm just going to be playing Mage first game, and Life Coach is going to go for his Hunter. So we'll see exactly what that is that is going to be. Hyped plays. I mean, I've seen him play Freeze Mage a lot, but. I don't know. I, I don't remember seeing much of the mech. I actually haven't seen him not play a mech in really? tournaments, but I haven't in seen tournaments, him in tournaments possibly. So. I know he plays a lot of he used to play a lot of freeze mage and the value mage, tempo mage, which with flame waker could be a good call to bring here. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that may be one of the things he decides to bring. Yeah. Alright, so mage versus hunter. If it's mid range hunter, what's the matchup typically? Like assuming mech mage versus mid range hunter. That's also like a coin flip, right? Yeah. Uh, the the problem is like, I've actually never seen these two decks in the same meta game. Meta game. Being very yeah. popular because when Mech Mage was popular, um, Mid Range Hunter was never popular, and it's just like when one deck is popular, the other isn't. So even though both decks have existed for uh, ever since GBG came out, I've actually like never seen too many of that matchup. Too much of that matchup. They both deal with Warrior and Druid on their own, so you don't have to bring both of them in the same metagame effectively. Like, one will have weaknesses that the other doesn't, so you can just swap them in and out to counter the same two decks in general. So I'd imagine that's why you don't see them uh, at the same time. But Life Coach used to play a lot of mid-range Hunter. Um, I wouldn't put it past him to bring face though. I mean, there's no reason not to if it's an effective deck that you feel comfortable with. But I know that you favor the mid-range Hunter deck a long time ago uh, very gotcha. much more than um, Fitz. Yeah, I was watching uh, his recent uh, NVIDIA match, and I saw him actually bring Face Hunter to that match, along with uh, Misdirection. Wow, alright, that's something. <laughs> Novelty, I, I wasn't expecting that. If he actually brought Face Hunter now, that's going to take Hype possibly a little bit of back, and he might be able to get a free win against the Rogue, being, you know, how strong it is against that specific class. It is very strong, but the... He will also have information, right? Because <laughs> means he's gonna his mage is gonna be in, and he knows that the life coach is playing face hunter. Yep, and he's not gonna queue with like as soon if, if the hunter wins this match, then life mm -hmm. coach doesn't have to try again against the rogue. Like he's just gonna yeah. lock it, and then hype's gonna have to go up against druid and warrior, which I would say for mage decks are generally good unless it's freeze mage versus the warrior. In which case, um, it's gonna come down to what life coach prefers to queue up into hyped after that. It's, it's at this point I think the the both lineups are really well rounded. I don't see a huge weak spot in either one. Yeah, exactly. Like for example, in the Kalento versus Orange uh, matchup, we like we could say like okay, this deck is favored against this one, that deck is favored against that one. But I feel like in this matchup, it's there's probably going to be a lot of 50/50s. Yeah, it's going to come down to you know the, the the way the players play effectively, like the the hand they get and the, what situation they get into. Oh, All right, well, sorry about that. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we're getting to game one, and we already see mm -hmm. one of the key cards for uh, for this matchup in Hype's hand, which is going to be the Goblin Blast Mage. Yeah, Life Coach playing a Face Hunter here with Wolf Rider, Glaive Zuka, Mad Scientist. This Mad Scientist is going to be very important to get. Uh, it's always the most important card. Although getting a second trap in your hand is sometimes preferable. That is an amazing topic, by the way. Mm -hmm. Now Life Coach doesn't have as good of hand. Yeah. Now, I, I have to say that Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, God. And it's going to come I, down I, next turn, possibly even. Yeah. I also have to say there's two interesting things about Hype's variation of uh, Mech Mage. And the first is the Blinktron 3000, which is going to be good in this matchup. And also, he tends to run um, he tends to run Harvest Golems instead of Spider Tanks, which also I feel is going to be good in this matchup. So this deck, even without the Kazab Mystic, should be better uh, versus Mech Mage than typical, uh, should be better against Space Hunter than typical Mech, mech Mage decks. Like, Life Coach has a really tempting Glaivezuka play here where he wipes the board and then could even play the abusive for the sake of it. Um, force a tempo loss on his opponent's side. The problem is there's a coin Kazan Mystic on Hive Stern just waiting to be used. Yep. It, that's not even, I don't know if you want to even use the abusive surgeon in that case. Yeah, you don't have the thing is you don't even have to play Kazan Mystic this early because the trap will not trigger as long as you don't let it. Oh yeah. So I mean, it, Hype can take his time. Like he can develop Mirror Entity if he wants to for the sake of just having the secret out. But if this board gets cleaned up by Life Coach, Hype's follow up has to be Kazan, right? I would say so. Yeah. And I he's think, gonna uh, go with Azuka. Even though it's not mana efficient, I kind of like this play because it does clear up the board. I wonder what Sector he got. If he got Misdirection, by the way, this is insane. <laughs> if Mage Spectre gets Misdirection, this could be yes. really fun. Oh, he, he, he finds Spider Tank. I think he just plays the Spider Tank here. No need to yeah. corner yeah, though, because not Mystic. Definitely. Do you want to blast Mage whenever possible? Yeah, it also gives you the opportunity to um, to simply just play the Goblin Blast Mage on turn 4 if he deems it necessary. Because I believe right now, Hyped can't be completely sure this is uh, Face Hunter. Glaive Zuka is kind of the only card that kind of gives you a hint. But um, like we have seen a lot of mid-range hunters use Glaive Zuka as well. If I see a snipe come out of that spider tank. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I see a snipe... From life coach here i'm going to reinvent the metagame in my mind hey, some mid-range hunters time to time did run right yeah it was played in some variants of it but yeah, era ran it i think in a mid -range uh, trade, life coach mid -range is having a nightmare here or is doing yeah. math i'm not too sure which one it is <laughs> nightmare <laughs> could be both they right kinda, they kind of <laughs> look the same yeah i was yeah. gonna say for life coach at least yeah. now we're getting word from the production that it is explosive trap that's on uh life coach's side of the field all right, so now Life Coach has to calculate what he wants to do. Haunted Creeper does look um, somewhat playable here. The problem is he doesn't know about the Kazan Mystic, which is a huge deal. Yeah. He's going to count on that Explosive Trap to do something specific, which it can't. Whatever play he makes here, it's so vulnerable to uh, Blast Mage, which is the reason I think he's having our time calculating things. Would you trade Wolf Rider with Abusive? Oh my god. Into the spider Would you thing? trade if you're a face hunter? No, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. You're, you're wasting five damage to minion, and you're not going to get it back if you do it. <laughs> you're not going to get back. Yeah, that's face damage you're never going to see again, damage. mate. <laughs> Just think that through. Oh, no. The creeper in hero power is likely to play, I think. But even then, that gets cleared, I think. Well, actually, if you play creeper here, Hype doesn't know if it's mid range or. Abuse uh, or the aggro yet? Is life coach counting on that? No, I, I think uh, I think hyped can kind of assume it's face, judging first of all by the glaive zuka, and second of all by the fact that life coach did play face hunter in Nvidia just about three hours ago. So I'm sure but the he cards saw that he's match. been playing so far it doesn't indicate it hundred percent. So I think yeah, uh, he not, might not have to go with his mystic here. So. When Life Coach sees the Kazan Mystic, I think his world will be flipped upside down. <laughs> like, it's just going to be excruciating. He's he'll a laugh. Mystic in a mage. Yeah, he'll probably laugh it off. Yeah, yeah that's he'll right. laugh it off, exactly. That's what he's he does. Kind of, he's that kind of person. Right. 
Here it also, comes. Also, um, yeah, I definitely uh, like this play. Especially and he knows now. In previous tournaments, we have seen Hyped play really badly around secrets. Especially in Kingwin Pro League. Oh, I, there was like, one match we saw that he could have won the exactly. game with the Alex Straza. I remember that. That was, yeah, that was really painful to watch. A slight ordering mistake cost him the game. Oh, yeah, I said that too. It was explosive with the Alex Straza, but it can the tag, right? Uh, I think it was something like... It was, it was explosive trap. But and, he didn't check, and he could have won yeah. if he did. Yeah, if he thought he thought it was freezing trap, but if it was explosive trap, he would have won. And he just sequenced uh, everything wrong. Like he he tried to draw cards instead of just going for damage first. Life coach. What a has terrible to turn, for life coach. If he loses board here, it's, I don't know if they're come back. So I guess the knife juggler and wolf rider tried to hit. Oh, abusive, abusive. with the creeper is a bit better because you get the the knife hits. Oh, those are nice. Good. Th that's a really Just nice one. Hit it is sure. enough now. Wow. Okay. Perfect. But there is an Anoyotron with a coin blast mage, so he's not out of the the woods yet. Did I say terrible turn for a life coach? <laughs> I take it back. Oh, yeah, well, you, the juggler is just, you know, you never know, right, with that uh, guy? Yeah, you're right. Like, he can put apples on anyone's head. Noyotron, coin, blast mage. I think, I, I don't see much of another play with the amount of pressure that's on this board, and the amount of one health minions, especially, I think. You know, you don't even have to attack here. <laughs> or do anything, because you have explosive, right? Yeah. Yeah, life coach, like, Hyped is just, he could pass a turn and go face. Like, in pink face. <laughs> that, that he could literally do that and be fine. Mirror to T. No, but then he's gonna give you a crappy minion and trade into it. You can't give him that value. Do you ever just ping face and pass? For for real, like legitimately, <laughs> do you ever do that? Spread <laughs> not bad. If you're if you're forcing you know, to trade with the everything he has. If you, the, yeah. Or... If you if you're considering uh, just going for face and pass, you might as well just play, play blink draw. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness! True Silver champion. Is that true? Wait, is that true Silver? Yeah. It could be like ogre warwall. Yeah, it could be ogre. No. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, what? oh, oh my wow. god! <laughs> <laughs> it's the it, best one. It's no Gorhal. Well, actually, Gorhal would be pretty bad, but I mean, it's no Gladiator's Longbow, for instance, but it's still pretty solid. And now Life Coach is just going to trade away everything. And, and you know, we're, we're cheering for that Eagle Horn Bow, but it's not even that amazing when you have a second one in hand stuck there. Yeah. It, it's free damage later on, but for the time well, being, it's, it's... It's essentially like Hype's got two Eagle Horn Bows. Right. Uh, hyped hype's outcome here on the Blinktron was, I think, much better. And uh, life coach is gonna have to punch face, very hard and very fast. How is he just gonna go punch double face? charges here? I With think, the bow, or... you just take the bow and you smash it in the face, right? Well, well, do you play the arcane golem? Is the real question. Yeah, yeah, you, you. Would... I, I think the funny thing is with face hunter, it's never about do you go for face, it's how do you go for face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so which <laughs> angle should I approach this from? Alright, well, Hyped is gonna make the, uh... Like, I can't believe I actually... I forgot about the trap last turn. Like, that was an obviously bad idea to even do. Like, passing. Wow, okay. Oh, wow, wow so, that's such, amazing. Such Blast Mage, much wow. You can consider Whirling Bladesing one of your minions, especially a Neutron. But if your opponent has Owl, that's gonna make it slightly worse. Yeah. I have to say, I don't see how Life Coach is supposed to recover from this. I mean, just that that another one alone is... I mean, Iron Beak Yowl would be great for him right now. But that's about it. Uh, quick shot doesn't help here. You have to kill Kamek got the <laughs> Blast Mage, Kill Kamek quick shot the Blast Mage? Oh, man. Oh, we got What if you just punch everything to face? 3, 9, 11... Yeah, you're dead on board. With the bow, yep. with the assassin's blade, sorry. So you really do have to kill that blast mage. Mm -hmm. With a command and quick shot. Iron B. Cal would have actually been the best possible top deck, I think. Yep. 
so you can just ignore your face and then kill command the plus mage. This would have been better than quick shot. Usually you want to join to quick shot this time now. All right, all right. Uh, see. Yeah, life coach doesn't see any ads, and he's gonna give up the first game. Yeah. Well, hyped is gonna be locking the game with mech mage, so life coach's hunter is still alive. But uh, you know, he's he is going to go eventually against the rogue, even if he queues up the hunter again into Hyde's hunter. That that if it's mid range, it's a great matchup for face hunter. If it's face hunter, it's gonna be a coin flip. And if it is rogue, then you're getting a pretty good matchup. So maybe sticking the hunter here for life coach would make a lot of sense. Perhaps Hyped will surprise everyone by bringing Rogue with a double faster, double heal up life coach. Well, there was a like hyper healing Rogue that existed for a while, um, like a mid range, like an oil Rogue with double heal bot, farseer, as you said. But yeah, it's not been like hyper popular. But I don't know. Does it? Yeah, how well against, does it do? Really? It's good against the face hunters. Yeah. I mean, you life must have been pinned brain. your opponent on that. All right. And you can do that in this format, so... I mean, at this point, if you're running double Farseer, double Healbot in your deck... Why run Rogue? Yeah, why, why are you playing Rogue in yes. the first place, right? <laughs> I mean, on ladder, I see it, but in tournament play, I'm a little confused. Uh, it seems like a little bit of an unusual pick that would be... So, Hyped is going to go for his Hunter versus Life Coach's Hunter, so the coin flip is going to be real. If it's mid-range, Hyped wouldn't have queued with it, I don't think. Would he? I don't think so. I think it's worse to play mid-range hunter than rogue against face hunter. What do you think? It's worse. Wait, come again? Is rogue better against face hunter than mid-range hunter is? Yeah, I think so. All right. I think they're both pretty terrible matchups, but I mean, it depends on what you're teching in your hunter as well. If you have either flare or Kazan mystic, then yeah, this might be an okay matchup for you. But generally, like mid-range hunter, it doesn't have the tools necessary to race the. Um, the face hunter whereas rogue there's still possibilities of like getting a violet teacher and to prep fan of knives for example yeah for an excellent turn and then following that up with a lucky uh oil or an actually i think i think the mid-range hunter might have better because you just need that then you're kind of okay against his so explosive trap i guess this is being played in a lot of decks could also make a lot of sense and mm -hmm. we're gonna get into the game very shortly there's a flare in hunter in life coach's hand in hunter Yes, that's right. In the hunter's hand, there's a flare. You don't say, Nox. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's not Hype's hunter that has the flare. The big question here, though, is do you keep this flare? I think so. I mean, would you not? <clears throat> I would keep it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you uh, used to keep it all the time, actually. But yeah, now you would keep it all it. the time, as if when flare was one mana. But it's somewhat questionable here. I don't Even know. Even it's I... the trap sword so much fault. There's a they're a central like part of the hunter strategy. So if you can just deny them, it's kind of like keeping Kazan Mystic against Mech Mage. Like, do you keep it? Well, yeah, I probably do. I I think this is a the exact same case or a similar case mm -hmm. at the very least. I'd say so. And you do have okay turn two. Just play Zuka or Juggler. Mm -hmm. this Juggler is a case here. Oh, it's mid range for hyped here. This is going to be uh, a bit painful, perhaps, but that quick shot will help mitigate some of the early game aggression. If it comes down to a juggler, that's a quick shot play. And that's probably the fastest turn one I've ever seen from Life Coach, I would say. Yeah, wow. I, his options are fairly limited, and I think it's a deck that plays itself fairly well. Creeper, no, I, I wonder if the juggler changed that line of play, or if, or if uh, he was going to go for that either way. Yeah, I would say it definitely had uh, something to do with it. It had a huge impact. Yeah, if yeah, if he um, if he didn't draw the juggler, there would be no way to offset this creeper, and this could be one of the huge swings that hyped is looking for. So he's thinking if he wants to go for that chance of missing, possibly. But I think it's like the odds are too much in his favor not to take it. Although well, there's you could go for Animal go. Companion, I kind of yeah. like it. And the thing you is, get uh, Leoc. I mean, yeah. what's Leoc? Uh, I'm... You get whatever and you're good, generally speaking. Yeah. Like, if you get Leoc, that's a 1 in 3rd chance of getting Leoc. Whereas, uh -huh. if you go for the Knife Trigger play, it's still kind of risky there, right? Well, it's a, it's a 75 to succeed. But maybe your board is possibly worse. 
is way worse. Unless you get Liak. Liak is perfect. Also, you have to consider how um, how much does Hype feel like he's Ooh. the he's the underdog in this matchup. So if you're the underdog, you might just be willing to go for the more riskier plays. He's that... also setting up for Knife Juggler into a second Haunter. Yeah, game. I was going to say the nice turn, turn four determines his line of play here, I think. this uh, The fact that he can curve more easily on turn four is a big reason for that, I think. All right. Well, Life Coach has two minions he can play, but that could get punished really severely. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yes. Hi Hype Ten. I mean, Hype Ten is just great against what Life Coach has as options. I think what the play might be is Glavezuka face and then Worgen Infiltrator re Glavezuka. I like or that. Or just Worgen and Hero Power also. Yeah, yeah, either either, either is those. Fine. Yeah, I like both. I think they're good. Time moves quickly. Yeah. Broke coach. This could be a slogan, actually. Like, <laughs> time moves quickly. Rope coach. That does seem like something I could put on a stream in an overlay. It goes oh. for Zuka. This could be... Yeah, he's playing into Aesthetic Swamp yeah. Ooze. That's... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he's playing into Aesthetic Swamp Ooze, man. Like, what the hell? Oh, yeah. uh, Mad Scientist has a 50% chance to snipe that Worgen. And it did oh, it. No, it didn't. And the Unleash. That's good. Not too bad. Yeah, so, you kill Mad Scientist, you flare? And then you play your you... own Mad Scientist? No, or no, you no, no. I don't think you flare yet. Okay. No, you don't. I don't think you do. So you wait for when you're absolutely forced to? I well, think right you're now... You're not going to be tripping anytime soon, and it's better to be able to than... How good would uh, kill the creeper, then unleash leopard gnome be? Oh my god, I thought about it, but then... Yeah. Well, you lose your war again, but then you get a pretty huge board. Then you can kill the juggler or the mad scientist, and if a, an explosive trap comes out to counter you, you get flare. You don't necessarily get a huge board, you just get... Yeah, a, de a semi-decent one, really. It's not amazing, but... Because the weapon complements that play pretty well. Yeah. There, there are actually a lot of good plays here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's a problematic like, turn for face hunter. Yeah. I can't believe I'm first, it. It's first world problems here. There's too many good turns! Well, he's not going to trade. I think this is going to be a full face turn. Oh, yeah. And at some point, he's got to go ahead and do that. Because if a Belcher comes out next turn, he has to have something ready. At the moment, there's no Owl. I'm tougher and tougher for Hyped, actually. And he has yeah, no way to board clear. Without Unleash the Hounds, without uh, kill, without uh, no Explosive Trap. It's about yeah. knowing what the trap is, though. Because, like, Hyped is counting on the trap from the Mad Scientist to be impactful in some way, I'm guessing. It, it's not going to be, but we know that uh, we know that from the flare. I just wonder, though, uh, if he's playing explosive traps. You mentioned earlier that a lot of mid-range hunters started putting it in because Zoo came back and Mech Mage is also around a little bit. All right, this trap is going to be huge. What is it? Yeah, what I think it? it's going to be explosive. Most of the time. Or Snake. I, it's funny how much Snake Trap has been played actually on ladder. If he just goes face, that's probably going to be explosive. Whoa. Explosive. Yeah, it has to be, I think, at this point. But we'll see. That, that flare will definitely catch him off guard. I can tell you that much. Oh, man. Life Coach plays the flare. A bit of an unorthodox card to find in a hunter nowadays. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah, everything is just gonna go face. Arcing Golem will probably go for come Arcane down. Golem here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Life Coach will almost 100% win this game. Yeah. I, I unless Hype teched in some kind of anti heal bot somehow. I don't see <laughs> somehow. This. That somewhere. somehow, yeah, he found a slot for the heal bot in his deck. I don't see how. Although, there's an argument to be made for Mad Scientist here. 
And you yeah, just play actually, Owl, Arcane Golem if an, a Belcher comes out? Not even... Not even... Uh, just Hero Power or Mad Scientist. Pick one. Hero Power here. You're cutting off a bit. An Arcane Golem. And you're missing out on total damage if you don't Hero Power. Yeah. So Hero Power is good here. Oh, hello. Actually, it's a guaranteed lethal, right? Yeah, there's no way you can stop it. Not here. Yeah, this Leopardome is also very impactful. So, if you're playing Explosive Trap, do you Mad Scientist quick shot your own explosive? Your own Mad Scientist and hope? I yeah, mean, it's I probably not going to do much, but it's like the only play you possibly have. To find then, that killbot that you yep. decked in your under deck. <laughs> then life coach, he uh he top decks his second flare and you're hyped is like what what are, what kind of deck are you running here, man? <laughs> Friendly conversation afterwards. Alright, he just concedes, so there's no heal bot in that deck, otherwise that would have probably been the play. Possibly not even an explosive trap or just the <laughs> one that was flared off. I'm not sure. I didn't see what was flared off, I missed out on that one. Yeah, it was explosive. typically it was explosive, but typically these days, I feel like um, players are just running one explosive trap and two freezings in their deck. So it made sense that there was no second explosive in Hype's deck. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Life Coach's Hunter wins the game, so that's going to equalize the series. Now, Hype still has a mid-range Hunter, and Life Coach's remaining lineup has a Warrior and a Druid in it. How does that... That's a pretty bad lineup against a mid-range Hunter. Or has you, the matchup improved quite a bit? You, you would think so, but yeah. Life Coach is probably running Mech, Mech Warrior. Warrior. Right, you said that a thousand times. I just, I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around it. Yeah, it's a deck that we pretty much don't see in the metagame at all, except from Life Coach. It's pretty kind of funny. like Hobgoblin Paladin, right? Is this? It's well, Savic's deck. That's effectively what it is. Well, funny you should say that because there is Hobgoblin Warrior by Razor. Right, with the uh, Warbot and. The Jeeves, I think, was running that deck for card draw yeah, sometime. Warbot, Jeeves, a Neurotron. Acolytes of Pain? Acolyte of Pain. Yeah. I remember there were eight cards that you could buff with Hobgoblin in his deck. For a huge, like, mid-game, late-game swing in one turn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, makes, I was going to say makes sense, but I, I'm not so sure, but I guess I guess it does. If you're trying to run a Hobgoblin deck, you can't go all in on the gimmick, unfortunately. You still have to maintain a deck that's well-rounded, and you use Hobgoblin as an additional tool to combo. Uh, in the mid game, it's it's more fun than necessarily effective, but it wins games at high competitive levels. Um, not consistently, perhaps, and, you know, as consistently as mid range pally, but it's definitely something fun. Yeah. Now we see that uh, life coach and hype. Uh, hype will be bringing hunter for the next match, and life coach will be bringing his warrior, most likely mech warrior. <laughs> I just want to see it. Like I, I I think I've seen him play it once on in KPL so far. Has he played it much anywhere else? Yeah, he's played it. I've seen uh, it every at least every three place. Times. Okay. Yeah, so it's just... everywhere. And he's the only player who can probably pilot that deck, right? <laughs> I mean, does anyone else even play that? I've seen yeah. one post or two posts about it on the on Reddit. Like people who got to legend with Mech Warrior. I'm like, okay, that that sounds fair, but tournament you know, play they're... definitely the only player. They're just uh, life coach alts. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, I had jokes stored for those moments, but I can't say them. <laughs> <laughs> that so, me laugh. Uh, I'm just wondering though, like if life coach you say plays Mech Warrior, but I'm not too sure about bring. I all, you know what though, like his first place is secured. He could have brought anything. Right. Like he could have literally person. brought anything, right? I really hope this isn't Patron Warrior because if it is, we might see uh, life coaches being like, yeah, this is, uh, well, we can, uh, we're getting into gameplay now and you can see this is indeed Mech Warrior. Oh my God. When you said it first. You didn't believe it? <laughs> yeah, I didn't believe it at first. So. Yeah, no, it's definitely that. <laughs> oh man. And Oh, there's two freezing traps in that hand, so that can't be too bad. The <laughs> bow and two traps. You throw them back and you're good. Now, do, do you think Hyped will pin Life Coach on the Mech Warrior or pin him on something else? No, I, I think he knows this is going to okay. be Mech Warrior. So, does he, the question is now, does he know how to mulligan against it? 
<laughs> that is the other I, question, isn't it? I, I certainly wouldn't. Okay. I would have no idea what to do. Like, if uh, if this is a standard warrior, if Hype knows this is a, this is a standard warrior, he would keep Savannah High main. But because there, po there is the possibility of Mech Warrior yeah. and Patron Warrior, Savannah High main isn't as... Uh, isn't as likely. No, you don't want to keep it against mid-range decks. Ooh, and nice wow. opening hand for her life coach. Yeah, most definitely one. Is... A little awkward turn coming from hype. Um, I like you, the mad if you scientist coin, so Yeah, if you coin mad dodgy. scientist. Going for possibles. Oh man, Life Coach just top decked the best card in the game. Oh my god. You're laughing now, but wait until it comes down the board. Now we do see some pretty impactful cards from uh, Hype though. Yeah. yeah. Unleash the Hounds especially. If he goes through the early game, I think he's gonna be in a pretty decent spot. This turn, I think. Well, it's going to spawn a lot of them, although it may not be as good because all the life coaches minions are pretty... Well, it's all but one health, so it's pretty sturdy. Yeah, well, life coach knows that there is an explosive trap in Hype's deck, so popping the Mad Scientist could be a bit of a problem. So he's got to think. Like, if he sacrifices the Cogmaster, then he loses the Inotron from Freezing Trap. Mm -hmm. But if it's explosive trap, then at least that lives and he can play something on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, but... It's ignoring the old base, too. If it is Explosive Trap, do you maybe want to consider just popping it now and setting it off so you don't have to deal with it later? It's kind of like playing around Sylvanas, right? What if you just do nothing and just ignore the board? Like, just go SM Orc? Yeah. You can just go all face right now and there can, and you can also summon yeah. Warbot just in case it's Explosive. How do often do you really get punished for this? I mean, Unleash is the biggest problem you're running into. Wow, this was really a heads-up play. I did not really expect this at all, but it just puts more pressure on your opponent, and I guess it makes sense here. Just playing, yep. uh, just going all aggro, basically. The weapons in the in the deck can carry the extra bit of damage. Hunters have, I wouldn't say a few ways, but they don't tend to play a lot of damage mitigation, right? Like, they play Belchers in mid-range, and that's about it. So if the warrior gets a weapon, it's guaranteed face damage at that point. Like, Death's Bite is a damage. I mean, mean, this Unleash. Damage. Doesn't Unleash, yeah, but Our... how would you trade here? Would you kill your own Mad Scientist? Because that's fine, right? Yeah, I think you want to kill your Mad Scientist, definitely. I, and you say, like, Death Spite is 8 damage, but don't you mean 10 damage with the uh, Arcanite Reaper Arcanite upgrade? Reaper, yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. I mean, I actually love weapon decks for Warriors. Just, I, I feel it's a little unfortunate that Aggro Warrior is pretty much non-existent. You don't see much of it. But I guess that's what an Oetron will do to your meta. And Sludge Belcher, that's what that'll do with your metagame. Dude, this is kind of funny. You have that? I'm sorry, Masan, you cut off a little bit. I didn't hear anything. Do mech warriors run Warwinds? Um, no. no, they don't. It's not a it's not an enraged deck. It's not really just, you know, tempo deck. A tempo warrior deck. Something I never thought I'd see, but... I was hoping maybe we'd see some of it with the advent of GVG and Shield Maiden with um, the Siege Engine, but all those cards weren't played in a tempo deck. They ended up being played in the more standard Control Warrior, not Siege Engine. If you're expecting Siege. Whirlwind, do you? No, he's not expecting Whirlwind. Well, yeah, he has a deck list probably. So well, this is awkward. It is. Yep. <laughs> this is really, really awkward for Life Coach. I mean, you can enrage your own Warbot, but it's probably going to oh, die man. the next Yo, turn. Plus one attack. That's a yeah. crazy minion, man. Can you... Yeah, and just generally all the cards in, in your hand right now are just not too impactful. And it's one of the issues with Mech Warrior, um, as is the issue with a lot of mech decks, is that you don't run card draw in the deck at all. Yeah, you Jeeves, and that's relying, about, yeah. yeah, you're relying on your early game, and I don't think this deck even has Jeeves. It just, it has six weapons, I think, and after that, it's just go for face, go for face, and just relying on those weapons to deal that extra damage. You could. 
your face and then kill off the mad scientist. But then that's still bad against explosive trap. I think that's still the only play he's got. He's gonna have to rely on weapons. There, there's absolutely nothing I could see here than just go full face and hope. Like killing the mad scientist is also okay because with the warbot, because mm-hmm. um, that way at least the web spinner might have to trade. But I don't know, man. This is just so painful. Now he might get a freezing trap later on, but for now he's just going to enrage the the bot. And the beast was found by hyped. Wow. So basically, it's a completely <laughs> useless card. <laughs> oh my god. I'll well, it did say put the... a beast in your hand, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what is that trap? And that quick shot is so good in this position. It's just crazy. This is like the perfect counter. Then. So if it's freezing, you can kind of ignore it, although you don't have to. Yeah, well, we're getting word from the admins that it is freezing trap. All right. Oh, so that yeah, shredder I mean, is not going to be an issue then. He just has yeah, to try to find a way to kill a warbot. Yeah, basically, like, you don't want the core crown elite to get frozen because it has charge anyway. So it's essentially mm-hmm. like giving your opponent even more damage. Oh my god. Yeah, you're Hype feeding recurrent damage. plays really good this turn. The, all three of the animal companion results are good. Leok's good because it kills off the 1 3 and 4 3 gets a set back. Uh, Hopper is the same, and then. Misha I Misha's guess. actually not too good to be honest. Like Misha doesn't kill the warbot and then that trigger is freezing. No, the you don't Life Coach doesn't know if it's freezing or explosive because he already seen explosive, right? Well if he lost his Corcron, he's got to think that it is, but that back to back shredder into pilot sky golem has got to be pretty satisfying. Right? Oh yeah. <clears throat> but you can the the Palace Shredder doesn't really do much here. So... I mean, it'll trigger the Freezing Trap, but that's about it. In this position, there's nothing else he'll do. I think it's still fine because, um, again, the weakness of Mech Warrior is you, you just run out of cards, and essentially, this Freezing Trap is kind of giving you more cards. It's giving you a card draw? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've never heard this argument from anyone, but that's a nice way to look at it. Mr. Brightside. I mean, Exactly. I'm trying to be the optimist here. That, yeah, it's good. Last half full guy. I, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. You're... Yeah, New to be honest, that's... just try to hit Leog, hopefully it hits, um, and go with Sky Golem. I think yep. it's going to have to be a Sky Golem play. Like, there's nothing else. The problem is that without weapons, this high main is going to be a life coach on the clock. Whoa. Wait, oh, what? wait. Did you think that was explosive? Why is that? No, you, just, yeah, you I, have I just, to go face. You, you have no choice. Yeah. You have no way to win if you don't go face. I definitely agree because if it were explosive trap, then it's good for life coach. And if it were, if it were, if it were freezing trap, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, and you probably matter. don't think that your opponent runs snake trap, uh, right? And you're probably not going to trade anyway to this board. Mm-hmm. So hyped by trading the mad scientist away guarantees a freezing uh, would return the sky golem or would you know summon the explosive to kill off the sky golem anyway. Is oh Hype going to play the beast? <laughs> Let it be real. If I get the freezing trap... It just brings back the golem, yeah. The D have? What does he have? Please play the beast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I demand the beast. Oh, oh no. God. He does not. Not the right one, Hyped. And judging from this line of plays, I think it's going to be... I think it's freezing, oddly enough. Oh, it's explosive. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, explosive we're getting away from production that it, it is explosive. It is explosive. Alright, so he, he has a Reaper now. That's 10 damage to the face. Mm-hmm. And what if he finds a... What's the best 4 attack charge man you could get? A Corcron off of this? Corcron, yeah. Definitely Corcron. Yep. Oh, man. If he finds Corcron Elite off of that Shredder, this is gonna be beautiful. Or disgusting. Pick your choice. You know, your choice of words. Well, we are looking at it from Life Coach's perspective, so beautiful. And again, as the uh, <laughs> as the optimist of the group, I have to say everything is beautiful, and that would be beautiful. What other 4-drop would help here? Like, is there even another 4-drop with charge that I can think of? I must it doesn't be... have to be charged, there's maybe. The, uh, there's Stormwind Knight, right? Right, well, that's 2 damage right there. 
You know, that's a good one. That's a good one. He may think it's just freezing trap again, right? Because he ignored it. Well, he's going to go for the same play he did last turn, I think, mm -hmm. in, that, in, that, in that case. Because killing the high mage just spawns more damage from the hyena. Oh, he's going to kill Leok and get a completely useless minion. And now he knows it's explosive, so he's going to trade away the Cogmaster on minions later on. Mm -hmm. Oof. Ouch. <laughs> that hurts me inside. Yeah, that's, that's like one of the best ones, I have to say. Yeah, that, that card is just inane. Pretty much the only card that in your deck that gives you taunt. Yeah, if he's not running Belchers, he must be running Belchers, at least in mid-range. I think it's very Well, special, no, no. But... I think most mid-range uh, hunters these days, they actually don't run Belchers, or they won't run one Belcher. One Belcher lay instead of two? All right. Yeah. A lot of them, some some of them won two Hunt Masters and... Yeah. Zero like, uh, like the the list that I'm most familiar with, and I think the list that Hyped is most familiar with, is Era's list, which runs two Hound Masters and zero Belchers. Yeah, Era's been doing amazing on ladder recently. Oh, that's Ooh. card draw right there. Yep. yep. Maybe there is something like a Black Knight. You remember when every aggro warrior ran Black Knight? Yeah, that's gonna be game, I think. I mean, the swing, holy crap. <laughs> he can play everything. <laughs> and get nothing done. Oh yes. my god, so much value from Mech Warper. I don't even know. And he ends up with one ironic extra mana crystal. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to make sure that the me the, the mechwarper's uselessness was highlight. Did yeah. that make much sense, by the way? Yeah, I think. What I chance? Think... Yeah, I mean that's about it. You can. Do... Well, I think uh, life coach four, three. might have sequenced that wrong. He should. He could have killed the four three there. Yeah. Um, but he would leave. Um, he would leave a two two on the board, or he wouldn't have that two two on the board, which is gonna die to explosive trap anyway. So I don't know. At this point, I think we're going he's through the not... motions. He's just gonna concede, and he does. So Hypes are gonna go up two one over Life Coach at this moment. So mid range hunter did get locked for hyped, which leaves him, I think, with the rogue deck. That's the only thing he has left. Yep. Rogue mistake. versus true. A mech warrior. A mech warrior. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what the matchup is like. I don't know how I feel. I, I you're cutting off a lot, Masan. There's a lot of uh, interference yeah, on let me, Skype. Let me reconnect. Yeah, so I, I don't know either, but I have to say, like, it's the problem of the weapons that Rogue really has to deal with. Because once, it, like, if the Mech Warrior gets a decent start, right. then all the weapons in the Mech uh, Warrior deck, it's just too much for Rogue to deal with. I mean, it's pure uh, phase Arcanite damage, Reaper, all of it. Yeah. yeah. Arcanite Reaper is a Pyroblast for five mana. And I remember, yeah, I couldn't, like when uh, back when um, Agro Warrior was a thing, uh, with heroic strikes and Arcanite Reapers, weapons were basically the biggest source of damage for the warrior. Sure, he did get charged minions, that was important, but the weapons were the biggest chunk of it. And in the exact same vein, decks without taunt, and that includes rogue mostly. I guess Belcher techs could help, but, you know, an anti heal bot would help a little bit. But generally speaking, that's a really tough matchup uh, if the weapons are had by the warrior. We're about to get into game number four, I believe, and we're going to see a fairly interesting warrior from Life Coach, but also a fairly interesting rogue from Hyped. Um, this probably is going to be somewhat standard, but it definitely does have some pretty cute tech cards, like Goblin Auto Barber in this deck. Yeah, the Sap and the Auto Barber are. I mean, the South Sea deck hand, like Oil Rogue, hasn't like doesn't always run South Sea nowadays. It, it wasn't there for a while, like as a standard card, and I don't see it systematically anymore. Yeah, it's just the, the big problem with Goblin Auto Barber. Well, first of all, it's not a spell. Yeah. But second of all, you want to be able to uh, you want to you want to play South Sea or you want to dagger up on turn two, and then on turn three, you want to uh, Goblin Auto Barber a question mark because you're gonna float a mana there, and that's just not efficient in Hearthstone. All right, I'm back. Am I still cutting off? Mm, well, he's sound fine for now. Oh, we see a Dark Iron Skull Cure in Hyatt's hand. Whoa. And a Defiance Ring Leader. The dream. <laughs> the dream is real. Wow. Is this real? There's no way. You, do you know what? This this uh, this Skull Cure is actually pretty good against a mech deck. 
If only for the initial wave of damage it, deal it deals. I mean, mm -hmm. is it though? There's it so many rage effects in mech. In, in this mech warrior, like the warbot and the frothing berserker. <clears throat> that you could just get punished. Just those two though, and warbots it's not really too much of concern. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, warbot got enraged, what are we all gonna do? Abort mission. You know, this is a great hand for life coach though. This Tinker Town 4 4 is just crazy hard to deal with. Oh, yeah. Them board. Still... I lied. I guess. Wait, I lied. That's an I, li <laughs> I lied. I not just lied again. I keep lying. I don't know. Straight here. I think the Defy Strong Leader will do about yeah, the same. Saucy deck hand Defy us and then attack the Warbot with the Saucy in your dagger. That sounds that okay sounds, to me. Yeah. yeah, it sounds good. Get a full, full board clear. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue there is, if even if you do that, you still don't have anything to do the next turn. <laughs> Although you just kind of have to deal with what you have right now and just hope to top deck something. You can set Benavis right next turn if it comes down to it, which isn't the best. Obviously, it's still worth something against. Against Mech Warrior, I think it might be worth. It, and the same goes for Life Coach. Coach really doesn't have good turn three play if the, the only mech that he has, which is Warbot, goes down. So Height is considering a play here. He's not too. Uh, he's not sold on anything yet, but he's gonna have to make a decision very quickly. At this rate, or Defy us, and we see the Tempo play where he gets a board. Ah, interesting. Alright. Yep. So so he knows that generally it's going to be hard um, for the mech warrior unless they have Cruel Taskmaster to deal with this uh, Defy String Leader or the Defy uh, Bandit. Yeah. The worst part Defy's for Life Coach apprentice. is the... Um, what's the name? The Screw Giant Clunker has no target at the moment. He's going to have to find one sometime in the mid game. I think he's just punch face. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. might as well. So you don't, you don't want to trade into 2 1 into 2. No. When you have 4-4. Four, four. Especially when you're playing aggressive back. This probably warrants an eviscerate though. A sap eviscerate or South Sea eviscerate. Like pick, yep, pick one. Sea. Like both are good. I prefer the eviscerate with South Sea, but. Attack with the sea first. I mean he's not gonna make that mistake, right? You never know. <laughs> prep coin prep. Before. Sprint. Oh wait. The Skulker might get a backstab value. Just a single one. Yeah. Oh, wait oh, a minute. Man. It could be more. No, it's not. No. He might wait. He might bite this time. Like, he may yeah, just he bite might just, this time. He might sap this. This seems like a yeah. perfect card to sap, right? Yep. And just dagger up. Go sap it, dagger up, go for face. Yeah, exactly. And then set up uh, an even better turn to Dark Iron Skulker. You'll be better in this turn. Is this even a Dark Iron Skulker turn next turn? I guess for for the sake of having the body on the board, you do. Ooh. Ooh. You can yeah, you can Clockwork Gnome and Screw Jank cl Clanker. Yeah, Clanker. I like that a bit more, perhaps, than... Well, how do you value that over Paladin Shredder? I guess the only time when the Paladin Shredder falls in value here is when the opponent has the backstab, SI7. Um, which is basically all the time, so you probably do, do want to go for the Clanker play. You know what? I don't even know this guy's battle cry. <laughs> plus two, plus two on mech. You mean you don't know what mech. it sounds like? I don't know what it says. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, that's a decent... Is it decent enough to play the skull cure? Because you have no eviscerate play. I guess you have to do it because your dagger gets rid of the clockwork. Mm -hmm. And you have a 4-3 left that survives the clunker, so... That's so you can probably just selling face. point. Yeah. Plus one attack would be huge. Or actually, the reversing switch accomplishes the a similar goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, could you actually already... punch face armor plating, reversing switch, then Corcoran for face for eight? Nah, you'd die. Long before you could handle this. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like a race now, which is really funny. I mean, you're the warrior player, and typically you're the guy <laughs> who's like armoring up. Yeah. 
could go for Pilot Shredder and then Cockmaster. Wait, what if you reversing switch the Skulker, you core Kron, armor plated, and kill the Skulker, and you kill the 2 2 with your clunker? So you're playing the control game here. Yeah, you're playing the control game at the end because you've got the, the Sky Ball on. Wiped out though. Yeah, you're, you're screwed. So you want to play something with stick on board, which is probably. The pilot is something. Pilot something. Yeah, <laughs> pick, pick one of the two. Like it's, it's all yours. Well, yeah, I reverse I switch like, the clunker uh, is good, I guess. Yeah, I also. I also like just uh, developing your board further. You don't. I don't feel like you have to clear at this point. Oh man. That oh, sure trick blade flurry is going to. Oh, rub man. it in. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wait, yeah, it still no, does no, it. You no. still go for a play. Unless he finds a prep, that's definitely the play he's going for. He finds a... Yeah, so... Play the Azure Drake hyped. You can do it. I believe in you. He listened. Is that going to be back step? Nope, it's not. Oh, interesting card. Oh. You just go face here still, right? Yep. What could have come out of the Shredder that would have negated? Okay, so he was dodging a Taunt minion with the. Uh, well, he's considering whether he actually wants, wants to kill, to the, kill shredder. the Shredder. Yeah, I don't think he does. Of that, so you're gonna losing. In before brawl. Well, that's a board clear. Mhm. Mm that's a pretty effective one of that. Yep, and you get the board, so this is pretty good turn for life. I think he's got to go for it, right? Yep. It has a lethal on board, so <laughs> what's the other line of play here? Oh, oh that's convenient. That's exactly what he needed, actually. Was Anorotron better? Probably, but yes. still. Well, Hype does have thought. card draw. The thing is, if Life Coach gets to armor up even once, this is this might just be all he needs. You know, just yeah. a bit of extra armor. Being able to weave in the hero power here is going to be a lot more important for him than it is for the rogue. Yeah, I definitely think you've used the cruel taskmaster here, but now you can actually because you got the taunt, you can actually just uh, you can actually just core on face right instead of just playing full control. But I kind of like full control here. Because you're you have fewer cards than your opponent, or yeah, you have more cards than your opponent at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, well, yeah, Hive Coach armor. is in a pretty good position here. Armor plating. It all depends. Oh wow, finds oh. more card draw. That is crazy good. Wow, so much card draw in Hype's hand. Yeah, that's definitely what he needs at this point. Yeah, judging from this hand, I have to say like. Hyped probably isn't running Sprint in this deck because there's just so much card draw. Yeah, yeah. reminds me of that uh, Pure Cycle deck. <gasps> no, that didn't just no. happen. Wait, is that good though? Well, Eviscerate SI is pretty sweet. Or you could yes, go for something else. I guess you, you can, don't want to. You can perhaps. I think you want to save the. Okay. You want to save Eviscerate for face because you're. So, so no mission, no mission, nothing, or SI. No, you should abandon knives in SI seven eight. Yeah. Agent, the two two that it's left over and so the one the one the two one dies anyway to anything it hits. So yeah, possibly even your dagger. How worried is Hive about a weapon? Not so much at the moment. He'd need like four turns of weapon swings to kill him. Exactly. I feel like you haven't seen a weapon from the warrior yet, and I feel like over the past few turns, if he had a weapon, I would have to think he would have played it, right? Yeah, I have to assume the same. Oh, looks like he's just gonna eviscerate an SS7 agent. Full board clear, gets the board, yep. and as as we, like as, as we mentioned, not really afraid of weapons at this point. I don't think that's a big. No. Uh, oh wow, that's that's actually life coaches. Possible out? That's just saying, uh, I'm afraid of weapons. The best draw. Yeah. 
No, Hype needs to find a. Oh, he, at least he doesn't need to, but he wants to find a sap uh, off of the. Ooh, a perdition's wait, blade? Wait. Well, I think you just go face at this point. Actually, is that wait, lethal like, with Blade 3? Two, yes, that, four, I six, think that yes, is. It is exactly <laughs> lethal. Whoa, oh my nicely God. done here. Perdition's blade, underrated card what for Rose. Ball. What an underrated card. All right, well, that is going to be game for Hyped and Mash, in fact, going up 3-1 against Life Coach. I think Life Coach still maintains uh, first rank in the group horde, but Hyped has secured his second spot in the group, so that's going to allow him to get to the semifinals, uh, the quarterfinals directly to the playoffs. Yeah, I believe now that uh, Hyped finishes second no matter what, yep. and unfortunately for Kaldi, that means Kaldi is out of the tournament and out of the playoffs. So first, the Life Coach, second, uh, hyped and the remaining matches will be about who gets to fight for third place. Yeah, Kaldi I think is third right now and the Trump could overtake it, I believe. So that's yeah. always a possibility. So we we'll actually, there won't be a break between the matches at this point. We'll be going into RDU versus Trump straight up. Um, 